Mattis Curran welcomes you to one of the most exciting cities in the world, New York. But he's not on vacation. He's here to check out the New York International Auto Show. This event might not be as interesting for industry visitors as Geneva or Detroit, but it is for potential car buyers, so there are plenty of world premieres to savor. All the big-name automakers are in the Big Apple, of course. Aside from domestic marquees, most of the rest of the action is from the Japanese and Europeans, especially the Germans. Mercedes has a world premiere introduced with a veritable fanfare. The presentation of the all-new GL reflects the dramatic increase in importance of the New York Motor Show, says Daimler's Joachim Schmidt. It was big last year, too, but that significance is growing every year. The new GL is the carmaker's flagship in the SUV segment and is unveiled in public for the first time here. And there's a special reason for choosing New York as the location for the premiere. The GL is built in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Plus, the U.S. is the biggest market for the luxury crossover. You can immediately tell that this has involved more than just a facelift. This is a completely remodeled vehicle that impresses with both its design and, above all, its comprehensive safety features. This vehicle has ample sides, which could influence its stability during storms or extremely windy conditions. So Mercedes gave it a world first, the crosswind assist. It means that ESP is used to keep the vehicle steady when subjected to strong side winds. Another new arrival is the GL's little brother, the GLK. The entry-level SUV also comes with a new design and over a thousand new parts. It certainly looks hot to trot. And of course, the smallest member of the Mercedes family, the Smart, is also at the show. Of course, there have been years where the Smart didn't sell too well here, says brand boss Annette Winkler. But it was a great first quarter with 999 units last month. They're confident of topping the 1,000 mark again. And a car show in the U.S. of A just wouldn't be the same without the big pickups. They're still big on overkill, and not just in terms of size. And if the car isn't big, then at least the engine should be, notes Matis. This Viper has an 8.7-liter displacement, a figure you'd only find in trucks over in Europe. The Viper is a bit of a babe. The design is new, but somehow still largely reminiscent of the original from 1992. Dodge has now been omitted from its official name. Volkswagen has its own stand in New York. No wonder given the marquees more than satisfactory sales figures in the U.S. Oh, we've, we've made a tremendous start to 2012. Very encouraging to see that our sales for the first quarter of this year were up over 40 percent. And that's after the two previous years, a cumulative growth of 50 percent. Jaguar Land Rover are also out to impress at the show with a broad model range and a new concept car. Nice. Evoke convertible. The Evoque convertible. It's the first time, says CEO Rauf Spade, that a convertible can be displayed and driven open top in an SUV segment, which is bound to appeal to certain drivers. Finally, Matis comes across something that looks like it's from a science fiction movie. The Terrafugia transition is a car and an airplane. It weighs around 440 kilos, has electrically powered fold-up wings, and costs just under $280,000. Here it is, the new Ibiza. For 2012, Seat has given the Super Mini a slightly fresher look and more efficient engines. We tried out the 1.2-liter gasoline version with 77 kilowatts and direct injection. The suspension is a decent compromise between performance and comfort. The Ibiza, which has seen numerous generations since its launch in 1984, is the most important model for the Spanish car maker.
The Ibiza is obviously one of Seat's biggest models, says R&D chief Michal Hintz. It has sold over 4 million units and is one of the two pillars of Seat, in addition to the Leon. That's why the car is so important for them. The revamp includes a snappier look. Xenon lights that are combined with LED daytime running lamps are available as an optional extra. The car we tested had halogen headlamps, which likewise deliver plenty of light. The side profile now reveals more prominent grooves and edges. The rear section has also been slightly modified, but here again the emphasis is on slightly. The main point was sharpening the contours, explains Michel Hintz as he points them out. They've given it a new V-shaped face, which includes the new headlights and the corresponding radiator grill. The vehicle now cuts a far finer figure on the road. With seven gasoline and five diesel units, the Ibiza boasts a genuinely wide range of engines. Plus, the most powerful gasoline model marks Seat's debut of the direct shift gearbox in the Super Mini segment. Our test car, the second most powerful gasoline version, can also be fitted with 7-speed DSG. This baby makes the dash to 100 kilometers an hour in 9.7 seconds. Official consumption is 5.3 liters of Super unleaded for 100 kilometers. Now, when you get into an Ibiza, obviously you're not expecting a leather-bound dashboard or walnut trim. But the dash isn't all solid plastic. There are also some spongy sections, which have a nice feel to them. A new feature is the control unit for the automatic air conditioning, an optional extra. Typically, Seat, as tried and tested in other models, is the plug-in setup for the sat-nav. The optional sunroof isn't really worth it, however. The extra light adds to the spaciousness, but it only opens up an inch or two. A bit of a shame. That said, the new Ibiza is a very classy alternative to its VW Group brother, the Polo. The Seat profits primarily from its lower price. In Germany, the three-door entry-level version with a 44-kilowatt engine and the most modest equipment goes for just under 11,000 euros. If you like more comfort and speed, check out the 77 kilowatt version we tested with the style equipment line. 15,650 euros will get you aircon, power mirrors, radio, and alloy wheels. ESG costs 1,400 euros extra. This is the look of the newest generation Porsche Boxster. The sports car combines familiar features, such as its fabric soft top with new ones, like a fuel-saving sail function, which kicks in when the driver slowly takes his foot off the gas. Porsche says it has overhauled its engines too, reducing fuel consumption by as much as 15%. The new Porsche Boxster has a starting price of just over 48,000 euros in Germany. Peugeot was presenting the 8th generation of its legendary 2 Series. The new 208 features a body that's 7 centimeters shorter than its predecessor, the 207. While the wheelbase has remained the same, rear seat passengers have gained 5 more centimeters of space. The engine range now features a new 3-cylinder gasoline engine, and Peugeot says the entry-level version consumes just 4.3 liters per 100 kilometers driven. Inside, the 208's most striking features are its smaller steering wheel and multi-level dashboard. With its blue and white logo displayed prominently on the hood, the new BMW 640D X-Drive Coupe is many people's dream car. 
equipped with intelligent all-wheel drive, the coupe should make for pleasurable driving, whatever the weather. Even when it's not wet and slippery, drivers can still enjoy its improved traction when taking curves at full speed. BMW has been making all-wheel drive vehicles for a quarter of a century, says Peter Tunemann, and has given around 60 models the 4x4 treatment. He believes that for a vehicle in this category, there's no better symbiosis between efficient dynamics and traction than that offered by the X-Drive, a diesel model with intelligent all-wheel drive. The 640D X-Drive Coupe employs the latest version of BMW's intelligent, permanent all-wheel drive system. In addition to varying the distribution of power between the front and rear axles, as needed, it also features a function called performance control. On curvy roads, this means the outer wheels get more drive power than the inner wheels, ensuring greater stability. The 640D's outward appearance exudes sportiness and luxury. LED fog lights come as standard. Its aerodynamically designed body stylishly underlines the coupe's sportiness. Chrome lettering adorns the car's rear end. Pairing BMW's most powerful 3-liter diesel with X-Drive creates a combination that's hard to beat. The engine comes equipped with multi-stage turbocharging and common rail direct injection. Its 230 kilowatts of power propel the car from 0 to 100 kilometers an hour in 5.2 seconds. BMW says average fuel economy is 5.7 liters per 100 kilometers. The 640D features an 8-speed automatic transmission that switch the lever to Steptronic mode and the gear shift can also be used manually. The interior is tidy and nicely arranged. The dials and onboard computer keep the driver well informed during the trip. Dual zone automatic climate control, a hi-fi audio system, and BMW's iDrive control system all come as standard. Even the base model 640D X-Drive Coupe comes with four seats, which can optionally be upholstered with leather, like here. The 640D with all-wheel drive sells for close to 82,000 euros in Germany. That's around 3,500 more than for the rear-wheel drive diesel model. BMW also offers intelligent all-wheel drive for its gasoline-powered 650i. This ensures that power from its 8-cylinder, 300-kilowatt engine is distributed as needed to the front or rear wheels. And BMW has already announced that it will be offering an all-wheel drive version of its 6-series Grand Coupe. The Techno Classica is the world's largest and most important trade fair for vintage and classic cars. This year, over 12,000 exhibitors from 30 countries came to the western German city of Essen to show off their wares. In addition to parts and accessories, over 2,500 vintage cars were up for grabs. Car makers also used the Techno Classica as a chance to show off the history of their brand. The Volkswagen Group, for instance, put on spectacular presentations that were real crowd-pleasers. 
Eberhard Kittler says tradition is incredibly important to Volkswagen, and that not all of their competitors can boast such a history. He says it allows the firm to demonstrate continuity and to show how an emphasis on quality, on design, and technical achievements are part of an organic process. He feels it's vital to demonstrate this, as it's a means of establishing confidence. This year, Volkswagen presented an exhibition about motorsports. Winning race cars and rally vehicles were on display, including rarities like this 1993 Rally Golf A59. Volkswagen used this prototype to test out the technical feasibility of electronically controlled all-wheel drive. And here's a rally legend known as the Salzburg Beetle. In the early 1970s, Porsche Salzburg souped up a few 1302 and 1303 VW bugs. Thanks to their radical tuning, which gave them up to 101 kilowatts of power, the Super Beetles won rally after rally. This Salzburg Beetle, with its characteristic red and white stripes, is one of the few to have survived unscathed. Eberhard Kittler says Volkswagen's own favorite is the Golf II Pikes Peak, the car that roared up that famous mountain in the state of Colorado in 1987. He calls this twin-engine vehicle wonderful and would love to start it up, but says we'd be banned from the building. But thankfully, he says, there are motorsports films where you can see the car in action. Man muss es mal gesehen haben. Gott sei Dank gibt es da Motorsportfilme dazu. This Pikes Peak Golf 2 can be driven using front, rear or all-wheel drive. The car's two engines deliver an unbelievable 480 kilowatts of power. Handling that kind of force is a real challenge for car and driver alike. But the Pikes Peak Golf II certainly had its rivals. The Audi's first-generation Sport Quattro gave it a run for its money. It was in this Quattro that rally driver Walter Röhr beat the Golf in the annual race up Pikes Peak in a record-breaking time of under 11 minutes. Audi was able to draw inspiration from its long and prestigious history. This C-type Auto Union Grand Prix was built by Ferdinand Porsche and was Germany's top race car of 1936. Its 16-cylinder engine powered the vehicle to a top speed of 340 kilometers an hour. Seat also presented models which have made motorsports history. Carlos Sainz, who later went on to become a world champion rally driver, first showed off his racing prowess in this Group 2 Seat Panda. Porsche naturally put the focus on its iconic 911. Vehicles like this Carrera RS, built in 1973, are now fetching hundreds of thousands of euros at auctions. Prices for vehicles of this kind have skyrocketed in the last few years. Around the globe, more and more collectors are looking for vehicles that boast a colorful racing history. It's a growing trend in the classic car market. But Porsche is unlikely to be parting with its Carrera RSR turbo anytime soon. Its 368 kilowatt six-cylinder turbo engine powered it to a second place finish at Le Mans in 1974. And here's a Volkswagen that's getting more valuable by the year, even without a racing pedigree. The VW bus is a much-loved classic, which has earned it a permanent place at the Techno Classic. Car.